So, no, I, I wouldn't say I have a passion for HR. Welcome back to Human Resources for the People. It's a human capital revolution. Today we're going to fire someone in Bermuda. This article is from uh, this law firm, uh, MJM Barristers and Attorneys. They're an employment law firm in Bermuda. Um, and so let's get into it. I think it's really interesting. Uh, I, I love comparative HR, of course. Uh, let's let's uh, set the scene a little bit. Bermuda is an island country off the United States. It's it's kind of a big place, but and it's like directly uh, east of of the East Coast. And it's not like the Caribbean, is, which is kind of towards which is to the southeast. Uh, Bermuda is a tax haven. Probably a lot of other awesome things going on there, as well as uh, beaches. So it's a former British colony, which does inform some of the laws there, uh, specifically surrounding uh, notice of termination. Employers can give payment in lieu of notice. You do have to let people know uh, whether or not they're uh, going to be terminated and give them a heads up, but you can just pay them their time out. That's not required in the United States, but it's often practiced. Uh, for example, if someone is uh, put in their two weeks notice, quite often they will be paid the, pre uh, the final two weeks and just be required to leave. Then finally, um, or next, sorry, uh, th there does need to be a valid reason for dismissal after an employee's uh, probationary period. And it has to be about the ability, performance, or conduct of the employee or the operational requirements. So you can, of course, lay people off through what's called redundancy. Uh, redundancy is a British English term. Um, Americans don't typically use it, but it's the same as, as layoff. Um, in addition, they have a mandatory retirement age set out in their contract. Again, this would be considered ageist in the United States and be discriminatory. Uh, we do not have requirements of retirement, uh, or we don't have retirement ages. Uh, you don't have to give a notice if there's a s serious misconduct um, or if there's misconduct that's short of serious but within six months of a written warning. So here, they follow a progressive disciplinary pattern, right, of verbal, written, final written. And it, it, you can be, if you're guilty of misconduct after a written one, you, uh, you, you may be uh, dismissed. In addition, if they're just straight up not performing their job, there's no misconduct involved, just not performing their job well. Also can be dismissed after giving them discipline. Pretty interesting. That is not required in the United States, of course, but it is welcome and encouraged. Uh, there is a, uh, a payment for redundancy. If an employee gets it has been there one year uh, and is terminated because of layoff, then there is a severance allowance and it's based on um, two weeks of wages for each year of service up to 10 years. So, you know, ultimately you could be paid at maximum uh, half a year's of wages for being terminated in a redundancy or uh, otherwise termination. And I'm pretty interesting. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty, uh, uh, that, that's a lot of money, I think, for a lot of people. Most severance agreements in the United States don't typically hit that number or get anywhere close. There is a process for uh, terminating an employee. Employees dismissed for unsatisfactory performance must receive a written warning to, told how their performance is satisfactory and given six months. If it still isn't going, they'll give another six months. And then they have to terminate the contract or the employment contract within six, 14 days of the expiry of the six month period, or they, they, they lose that right. Um, when they, when they, when they're fired for misconduct, they must receive a written warning and explain how to improve. And they can get, uh, they can be dismissed immediately if they continue to have problems. Uh, and when you are being laid off, you get two weeks notice. Uh, so th the other interesting thing, as we've covered in other articles, is that employers must also consult with the trade union on measures with respect to redundancies and layoffs. So you don't have to go to a, an employment agency, which does exist even in the United States, depending on the size of the layoff. Uh, you don't have to do that, but you may have to speak with the trade union. That is, not, that doesn't really happen in the United States. What typically happens with respect to the trade union is if there is a union in place, they'll consult the contract and then speak to the union to discuss the nature of the layoff. And that's usually how it works. But 
it's it's one of those things where you your best bet is to discuss it with the union. So it's an interesting thing. It's not required in law. Um, you could receive an unfair labor practice if you don't follow your uh, contract, but ultimately it's between you and the union, not the government. Uh, so there is no special rules relating to mass terminations, but I found this one to be interesting. There's an Employment Act of 2000 that talks about sham sales. So the idea is instead of the way I understand it, at least instead of paying people out or having or, you know, paying all this severance, you could just sell the company to a fake employer. And then that would deprive employees of their rights under the Employment Act. And this, you know, the Employment Act of 2000 is, um, it, they it's applicable here and so people would just sell the the company in, in a fake manner and then not pay any of this any of these severances which i think is terrible and uh not terribly surprising but but frankly unfortunate let me know what you think in this exploration of the employment laws of other countries i enjoy these quite a bit i like exploring them let me know what you think in the comments down below and we'll see you on the next video bye guys